What's up guys? Welcome back to Ground Level Garage in Brooklyn, New York. For those of you who've been following the channel, you're probably aware of our N600 build that we got going on. We made a lot of progress on it in the past couple months. We have a new video coming out very soon about some major improvements made to the car. But it got to the point where it was time to source some wheels. And I think we made the right choice and went and found some 10 inch SSR formula meshes. Period correct, the perfect wheel for this car. And they look like shit. But that's what happens when you buy vintage wheels and it's nothing to be afraid of. Today we're gonna to show you how to refinish vintage wheels so that they look brand new and celebrate the tradition and history of the car that they're going on. Welcome back to The Curb Cut. All right, so when it comes to sourcing the right period correct wheel for your classic car, the scarcity of these things is becoming a real problem now, okay? Especially in sizes like this. I mean, this is a 10 by six and a half, four by 110 lug pattern. You're not just gonna find these on eBay and you're not gonna find them at the local swap meet either. We had to go on Yahoo auctions and import these from Japan. And while these wheels may look haggard to most, choosing and sourcing the right wheels is paramount. Taking the easy way out with cheaper alternatives or modern fill-ins for the sake of convenience just doesn't cut it in the end. Do yourself a favor and buy the wheels your car deserves. All right, I knew from the auction photos that these things were not gonna be pretty. You know, the faces are pretty corroded, the lips are all oxidized, but there's no bends, no cracks, no rash, no structural issues to really worry about. It's all cosmetic here. So the first thing we did was we removed all the hardware, all right? You guys know how to do that. You know how to use a wrench. You can get these things disassembled. And now that that's removed, we're gonna take the face out and start working on our lips, okay? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is start with using a 180 grit pneumatic scotch Bright wheel, okay? This is gonna take off all the basic oxidation, at least loosen it up enough that we can start sanding it away. You don't wanna start out too fine in the beginning because you're never really gonna get the major imperfections out. And all you really will do by starting out too fine is work the imperfections deeper into the polish and you'll never really get them out. You wanna start off crude with a rougher grit and work your way in, all right? Also helps to start off by just wetting the entire surface before you get into it. Lubricate it a little bit, all right? And now we'll start. Alright, so now that we've done some crude work with the 180 grit wheel, we're starting to see this look more like a brushed aluminum face than that milky, gross, oxidized thing we were looking at before. And we're headed in the right direction, but we're nowhere close to where we want to be. Now we're going to step up to a 500 grit wheel and repeat the process. Wet it down, start working in, and because this is a stepped lip, we're not going to get too good in these areas where it sort of folds over. But that's okay, because after we're done doing this, we're going to move on to a whole other material to get the details. It's also a good idea to set yourself up with a designated controlled workspace for a job like this. You're going to be spending a lot of time on this job, so having everything right where you need it is going to shave a good amount of time off of the hours you're going to spend laboring away. <laughs> All right, so the crude work 
With our polishing wheels and the die grinder is done for now. We're able to get the oxidation broken off of this wheel. We got that brush finish starting to happen, okay? This is where things are gonna get a lot more boring, all right? We're gonna start working on things the old fashioned way. We're gonna start employing some old school sandpaper. 500 grit, once again, just like the green wheel we just used. But now we're gonna start working on the finer details of the wheel with our fingers, okay? Work into all the crevices, nooks and crannies, and continue the brush process as we move closer to polished. If it wasn't obvious, this is gonna be a dirty job. So you're gonna to wanna to wear your rattiest shop threads while you do this. And be kind to yourself while you slave away on your new investment. Crack a beer and throw on a favorite playlist. Today is your day, you earned it. All right, so we're done with the 500 grit treatment, all right? 20 more to go. We're gonna start working with 1,000 grit sandpaper now. Same process, working around the wheel, with our fingers, with our hands, just some elbow grease to get this thing shining up. But as you can see, right now, we're far away from where we started, okay? We're starting to see a raw aluminum finish happen to this wheel, okay? This is only gonna polish up finer as we move up in the grit of our sandpaper. So follow along, I promise you it's worth it. Another note, let the materials do the work. You don't have to rub so hard your cuticles crack. Work in nice, even motions and let the sandpaper do its sanding. It doesn't take the strongest guy to get the nicest polish. Truly anyone can do this job with the right amount of patience and attention. All right, 1,200. All right, so we're done with the 1,200 grit stage. And because it always helps to go the extra mile, we're gonna do one final pass with 2,000 grit sandpaper before we get into polishing this thing up and getting the real luster out of our hard work. All right, so one more pass before my fingers fall off. All right, so now for the most satisfying part of the process, we're gonna polish these things up to be mirror perfect using some old school mother's aluminum polish. All right, we're gonna use a pneumatic polisher here, apply liberally, and run it until we can see our faces in it. All right. So if you're wondering what we do with the faces of the wheels, that involves a bit more resourcefulness and tooling. Our friends down the block at Opus Fabrication were kind enough to let us use their blast cabinet so we could media blast the faces. Another painstaking task, but incredibly intuitive given the right tools. If these faces weren't such an intricate mesh design, perhaps I would have sanded them down as well, but there's no way I could have refinished these by hand. And I have to say, I'm thrilled to have done it this way.
All right, so after several hours of sanding and polishing and beer drinking, here we are with our finished result. Some beautifully refurbished classic Japanese wheels for our vintage car. We went ahead and media blasted the faces, but we haven't quite picked the color yet for the car. I'm waiting on some hardware too. But if you want to see these all buttoned up, stay tuned for our coming N600 video because there's going to be a lot of other updates you're really going to want to see. But until then, we'll see you later.